There's three major topic areas to discuss here. Uh, one is the slippery slide syndrome. That is that when teams start doing agile, they, at the very beginning, things can look very good and people are doing it kind of the correct way and it's very useful. Then bit by bit, there are kind of slight changes kind of made for good reason or good rationale at the beginning. But those slight changes can add up to be a negative result at the end. And maybe after six months or a year, what was agile at the beginning becomes not agile at the end and there are major problems. So I want to discuss 10 examples of this where people go, go down a slippery slope and for each one kind of what can be done to either detect that or to fix it if that actually occurred. So a quick reference to the slippery slide syndrome. Again, Wikipedia is a good example for a good definition for most of these uh, uh, keywords. A relatively small first step leads to a chain of related events culminating in some significant, usually negative effect. And so here's some examples of how an agile team could start off on a slippery slope, kind of not even know it, and then bit by bit that becomes a, a habit or a chronic issue on their team. For example, they all <coughs> add all project to do's to the backlog. So the backlog is where requirements uh, exist, they typically use the stories like a product backlog. Uh, but if the team has no other place to put their to do list, they can quickly end up uh, populating their backlog with to do's versus kind of requirements and the requirements going to get pushed out over time. And so at the beginning, that could be a good idea. <clears throat> like, where do we store our to do list? And then bit by bit over time, they end up with uh, nothing of a user story perspective in their backlog. And I'll go through some exa detailed examples of these uh, in a few minutes. Uh, just make story points equal to days. So story points is the item in Agile to look at complexity, uh, typically on a scale of zero through 40, where 40 is very complex and uh, one or two will be uh, very simple. And so the idea is to kind of get a rough idea of the magnitude of the project uh, from a complexity perspective, and then, then to look at days or labor uh, as a second uh, part of estimation. But often uh, when people get started on Agile, uh, to simplify the idea of story points, they say, well, just make story points equal to days, and then we'll track that over time. So within a month or two, uh, they've lost the notion of complexity. And uh, again, they lose a whole uh, perspective of estimation. Uh, skip writing test cases, the testers will figure out the code later. <clears throat> again, this is a tempting to do at the beginning because uh, there may be no time to actually do testing or test case writing or test cases may be difficult to kind of do. But if you pursue that line of thinking over time or a team does, uh, then you end up with the testers or QA people that really have no idea what the code is trying to do. Maybe the developer has a, an understanding, uh, but that is not conveyed through the code itself to the, to the tester. And therefore a lot of time is spent trying to uh, you know, test the code, but really having no idea of the end result. We have, will have the customer test the code to save time. Again, at the beginning or in a particular uh, situation of duress on a project, that may be a good workaround. Uh, but if that becomes a static issue or a, a common way to do things, uh, then you end up with a lot of defects being pushed down to the customer uh, that has its own negative uh, consequence. <laughs> Uh, the design is in the code. No, really it is. And so when I work with companies, I'm typically doing appraisals against a uh, collection of practices, uh, one of which is design. And design is something a team would do after a requirement before code, kind of like a architecture or interface design or GUI design. And if the team gets two in a rush or they really haven't nailed the idea of design in the flow of what they do, uh, they can rationalize pretty quickly that if you guys just understood the code base, uh, that's 4 million lines of code, you would see the design in there. Okay, uh, That would be like walking into a building and uh, saying, well, the design's in the building. Well, no, the, the, the bricks are in the building and the implementation is, but the actual architecture or the design is something abstract from that. Uh, we, and of course, if you don't if you don't have a design notion early on or do some kind of design activity, uh, then you can end up with major design flaws like performance or reliability or compatibility with other systems. 
Uh, we meet every day, so we are very disciplined in Agile. And so I think Agile is a lot more than meeting every day. Uh, teams that meet every day, every 24 hours, they're disciplined at meeting every day, not disciplined in Agile. And so people have conflated, now some teams conflate the idea of meeting daily at 4 p.m. Uh, with the idea they're now disciplined and agile, and they, they are quite different activities. Uh, and we must be assessing risk and performing design because the team is in constant communication, constant. And so one of the things I do with companies is look at how they do design or testing or risk management and other activities. And when they're starting out with agile, <clears throat> they may think, well, we must be doing that because we met every Tuesday and occasionally we discuss what could go wrong, or we meet every Wednesday, uh, people often kind of draw two circles on a whiteboard and are connecting with the line, so therefore we must be doing design. So our constant communication must be an example of doing uh, risk and design. And of course, th those topic areas may get covered, but you really couldn't say uh, that risk and design practices are being done just because the team is in constant communication. So there's a bit of kind of whitewashing and conflating going on between the activity of communication, which is good, and the more specific discipline of these examples here of risk and design. So these are just example quotes I'm kind of collecting here of where a team is well-intentioned and may be very skilled at what they're doing, but bit by bit, if they kind of follow this kind of path uh, long enough, maybe a week or two weeks or four weeks, then that activity estimation, uh, size estimation, uh, uh, design, etc., are going to go by the wayside. So we get this negative effect at the end that kind of bit by bit, these things get pushed away. And then the team has to then uh, live in a situation where these things don't exist and all the problems they have because of that. But they don't really see it going on because it's a very gradual slope. They're going down uh, bit by bit over time. So let's discuss uh, 10 examples of this, and then we can do some questions at the end. Uh, so first one is no use of stories or requirements. So if you're not familiar with Agile, uh, the requirements of what you're building uh, typically go into a product backlog, a list, of what we're going to go work on. And the backlog has both the part we commit to and kind of a part that are good ideas we're going to consider over time. So one place is called the backlog. And the idea is that uh, we put uh, requirements in there of a particular format. So when we uh, show the customer or we do testing and design, et cetera, coding, uh, we know what to go build. And so the rationalization here, the slippery slope starting, is we know what to build, just put the to-do list into the backlog and then kind of start the project. So here's an example of what that would look like. This is um, more common than you may imagine. Uh, now, often teams that do Agile well or software projects well have very good backlogs and very good requirements. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.